What's up, YouTube? This is your boy, JD, and thank you for viewing Coast to Coast Gamers. It is Sunday, January 21st. Uh, it's, it's a great day, um, I can say. Even though we get a nice snowstorm here in Utah, we got this weak snowstorm. But anyways, um, here about to play NBA 2K18, my second season, the second episode of U uh, the Utah Jazz after winning the championship for the NBA Finals. So I'm about to play the Pelicans. Um, kind of hyped today, even though most of most of my day is going to be in church. I'm going to miss the darn championship games. I'm really rooting for Jacksonville Jaguars to beat New England. I mean, even though I know New England's going to go, but just wants a little change up. New England been going to the Super Bowl too many times. Let's let's let somebody new come put in a little fresh taste. For, you know, change up the Super Bowl a little bit. The NFC. Really don't care who, who wins, even though I'm an NFC East guy. I'm a Redskins fan. I'm just glad Dallas ain't going. Because Dallas Cowboy fans are just ridiculous. Cowboys go to the Super Bowl and never hear the end of it. I just can't stand Cowboy fans, even though my wife is a garbage Cowboy fan. But anyways, yeah, NFC East, I really don't care who goes. Uh, I don't care if it's Philly or Minnesota. Uh, you know, But I would like to see Jacksonville go. Just to do a little change up. But we all know New England's going to win it. So it's going to win it all. Because, you know, you got the great Tom Tom Brady. Not hating on the guy. The guy's the truth. He's an awesome quarterback. So leave it at that. So with that said, let's go ahead and get to the game. Um, I don't do the commentary on this, on this, on the second season. So enjoy the game. All right. Louisiana as the Pelicans prepare to take the court. So off the tip, it's Utah. And checking out Utah's opening lineup. Rudy Gobert is out there with Kyle O'Quinn. Then it's Jay Crowder. Then it's Ricky Rubio. And it's Mitchell in at the two-guard spot. From distance, when he gets into a rhythm early, it makes this offense a lot more dynamic. Well, great to get him involved, particularly at the start of the game. This is what keeps guys engaged. Cousins dishes to Davis. Right side Hill, six to shoot. Davis setting the pick for Hill. Off the screen. Good as a jump shot ball. Firm screen set by Davis there. That got his teammate a great look at the rim. And Rubio kicks to O'Quinn. And the rebound goes to the Pelicans. They come into this one following the loss to the Grizzlies. Just didn't like the energy level in that one. And that offensive execution also was lacking. They made a few shots, Reg, but just wildly inconsistent. Stolen by O'Quinn. In transition, here come the Jams. And slam dunk by Gobert. Out quickly, then the beautiful execution. You can't do it any better. Uh, there's running the floor, and then there's running the floor with purpose. And I love the energy on this play. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. Uh, Hill's smart about taking quality shots. He can play either forward position. It's a nice bit of versatility for a coaching staff. The Pelicans shooting their first free throws here for the night. And 74% has been the mark for them on the season thus far. Both free throws good from Hill. First quarter, about a minute and a half in. And Rubio kicks to Mitchell. And it's Mitchell with the jam. Okay, two hands for safety. That's that's what they say, right? Uh, that's right. He was ultra safe with that dunk, no question. Holiday, the pass to Moore. Screen by Cousins. Outside Holiday. And it's O'Quinn with the rebound. Jazz have gone three of four from the field to start out the game. The drive by Rubio. Three-pointer, Crowder. It's rebounded by New Orleans. Last time they met was in Utah where they beat the Jazz. And, and the last time these teams met, it was a walk in the park, and everybody got in on the act. Oh! oh. 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 
It's a phenomenal crash from Anthony Davis on the boards there. He comes up with the rebound and gets an easy pass. Oh, oh God. Really crisp, intelligent passing to make that basket possible. Outside Holiday, Cousins dishes to Davis, and the shot goes in. Well, when Davis can get that kind of position down low, those kinds of looks are pretty much golden. When Anthony Davis came into the NBA, you started to think about how he could dominate on the post, but it's really the growth in him as a shooter to stretch it out and shoot three-point shots that really has opened up some eyes. Tries it from the top of the key. No good that time. So Utah will take it the other way. This game coming on the heels of their win against the Kings. And, and I know the defense wasn't great, but yet and still, their ability to stay composed was impressive. But it, it led to a big scoring effort taking advantage of every weakness. So any possession the defense wasn't aggressive on, they were on the offensive end. And the defense, not so good. And when you're deep inside like that, you, you got to come through. Cousins, no one around him. The shot goes down and he gets this game back to even. Cousins has got himself on the board with three there. And Rubio kicks to Mitchell. For three. Anthony Davis with the rebound. Davis has got his third rebound tonight. Moore outside. Outside Holiday to the wing right side. Davis sets a screen. Last holiday. There's the triple. And again, New Orleans with the triple. A lot of people feel like Moore has natural point guard ability, so I like to see him find the open man. Pulls up from the corner. And it's rebounded by DeMarcus Cousins. New Orleans leading by three. The three. And there's Davis. That's good on the assist by Cousins. And that's now seven points for Anthony Davis. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. Here's O'Quinn, and O'Quinn slams it in. O'Quinn getting up and testing the resiliency of those rims. New Orleans has gone three of five from three-point land so far in the ballgame. Moore outside, and Holiday has it in the corner. Another miss by Holiday. And the stroke definitely lacking confidence this quarter. Nothing on target. Mitchell passes to Crowder. And the whistle blows, so a chance here for a three-point play. Yeah, heard the whistle and then kept his focus and able to still knock it down. A platoon swap here for New Orleans. Utah shooting their first foul shot of the night. And we've seen coaches that yell. You've seen some that show no emotion and everything in between. In your opinion, what's the perfect mental makeup for an NBA coach? I don't think, Kevin, there's any exact science to what coaching can be. And I think the best coaches just have an innate ability to know when to push buttons, how to push buttons, and to do it on an individual level. There are many times that a coach can make the biggest impact with his player, Kevin, taking him aside and having conversations rather than doing everything in front of the team. And I think the best coaches have a pulse of each player on their team and take the time to go and do that. And their post play has been really solid right off the bat. Rubio dishes to Mitchell. Picked by O'Quinn. Out of bounds, New Orleans will take possession. Here we are in November. Let's see how things are shaking out in the West early in the season. You look at Utah. They're in second, looking to take over the first spot and checking out New Orleans. They're 10th best in the conference. And you know, for the Pelicans, they haven't packed any big surprises into the early part of this season. They're right in the middle of the NBA's pecking order. And based on their early returns, it's really hard to see that position changing very much in one direction or another. I see them as a team that's right there in the middle of the pack, but not one that's ready to make any leap this year. And right from the start, Kevin, they've been pounding the glass. Most of those 50-50 balls also going their way. The Pelicans trail. 125 left in the first. Releases from 15. Jackson misses. 
Utah has gone one of three from beyond the arc so far in the game. Kicks it to O'Quinn. And a fast break now for the Pelicans. Jackson's got the ball. And finished off by Wright. And the defense to start that play was terrific. And I love the fact that they attacked early in the shot clock. And he's got his first chance at the line here. Free throw drops for Wright. 103 left in the first quarter. Here's Mitchell. Blanketed by the D, he fights to the rim for the layup. Mitchell's got six. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. Walls knocked loose. Stolen by Mitchell. That's in, and that's his fourth basket of the night. He's taken seven shots, a solid 57%. And another momentum shift. These teams going back and forth all night. Yeah, which team's going to find some consistency first? Neither one can pull away. And slam dunk by Gobert. Oh, such a beautiful pass to set that one. Yeah, the pass might have been pretty, but the finish was angry. <laughs> There's a screen. Now the pass to Bialic. Connects from three-point range. Bialic has got his second bucket of the night. 15 seconds left in the first. Here's Rubio, and Utah again with the bucket. Where was the D on that one? Just too easy. Now, right from deep three-point range, and it would have counted had it fallen, but it's offline. We've got more NBA basketball coming your way in just a minute. Pelicans trail by three on the floor for Utah. Getting going here in the second quarter. Ricky Rubio is out there with Mitchell. And it's Rudy Gobert. Then it's Jay Crowder. And it's O'Quinn in at the power forward position. The Jazz shooting the ball with incredible accuracy. 68% so far. Takes the three. That's tipped. And it's out of bounds. Utah able to retain possession here. And we'll examine here how the distribution has been between three-pointers and two-pointers tonight for New Orleans. Liking the effectiveness they've shown here from three-point land. And I say, hey, shoot it more. They, they've been successful with a high field goal percentage. And we'll see if that continues to be a part of their arsenal. Crowder goes in. Rebound by Bialica. And forcing the miss there. He just knows how to pressure you defensively. You hear a lot about rim protection. This is a good example of how valuable it can be. He kicks it to right. Down to five on the shot clock. The feed now to McAdoo. No good that time. Gobert with the defensive effort. Jazz leading by three. Mitchell kicks to Crowder. play just over a minute of basketball here in the second quarter to the right side the Elitza offensive rebound nice shot by McAdoo McAdoo's got the opening basket here in the second quarter for New Orleans tremendous effort he will not be denied on the offensive glass Here's Mitchell, guarded by Jackson, and then Mitchell with the dunk. And he shows us all what the breakaway rim was invented for. Can you believe he almost brought the whole thing down by hanging on that long? And Belyta has it in the corner. That misses at a chance to tie it there. I'm not sure why he keeps trying his luck from deep here. It's just not his night. Hit his leg, and it's being called a kickball. A big group substitution here for New Orleans. DeMarcus Cousins is checked in for Diallo. Davis comes in for McAdoo. Solomon Hill is checked in for Bielitsa. And it's Drew Holiday in for Jackson. And a switcher also for Utah. Howard's checked in. Here's Mitchell. Sinks the triple. Mitchell's got 13. Well, the defense looking at him like a Rubik's Cube. They cannot figure him out. He continues to light him up from the field. More importantly, they're winning. D2 from Hill. Rudy Gobert with the rebound. Gobert's got three rebounds so far in the game. Here's Crowder. It's rebounded by New Orleans. Davis has got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. And Wright kicks to Cousins. 
uses the glass to finish the lane. Cousins has got his second basket of the night. Timely passing leads to assists, and that's been the recipe for success. Sounds weird to say, but a guy seven feet tall like Anthony Davis could be considered an out of nowhere superstar. In high school, he was a skinny kid on the bench, not like he's big now. But until an eight inch growth spurt changed everything, that's why he's got those point guard skills. Great D that time from Howell. Jazz leading by four. Now in the scoring column with that deuce, one for two this game. That's some good interior passing, and that's how you move it on the inside. And Davis wasn't on the recruiting radar really until his senior year of high school. I really cannot believe that, especially after watching the one year in Kentucky, winning a national championship, the most outstanding player of the tournament, the number one pick, grabbing a gold medal. I mean, the, the scouts are out there, right? Here's Howard, and again, it's Utah. Howard establishing some confidence now down low. Just get him the ball and let him take care of business. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. <laughs> New Orleans making a switch here. Moore's checked in. The Jazz also changing it up. Yurebko's checked in for Crowder. Livingston comes in for Mitchell. And Raul Neto's subbed in for Ricky Rubio. Holiday inside the line. And again, New Orleans has no luck. And that's really a function of the offense not working as it should. Yeah, maybe lazy play calling or just going through the motions on that possession. This often leads to a bad shot. And doing their best to maximize possessions. Just staying focused with this lead. Well, it isn't much, but they've been able to capture some of the momentum of this game and increase their advantage. Pelicans trail by 10. Screen by Cousins. And Holiday kicks to Moore. And the three off target. Well executed. Great rhythm. You've got to finish that. Well, it's like Thanksgiving out there. Carving out space off the screen. Just couldn't complete the play. And Cousins kicks to Holiday. Good. And it's Cousins picking up the assist. Six points for Drew Holiday. Sometimes Cousins, with how well he sees the floor, has those bullet passes. That one on a string. Inside. Here's Howard. Plays it up and banks it in. Howard's got eight points here in this quarter. And this has been a great job of just getting into the middle of that defense and really scoring effectively from the paint. Got a piece of it. And the Jazz pushing it up now. Here's Neto. Great D that time from Davis. Yeah, defense timed that out perfectly. Love the aggressiveness. And then they changed the shot's direction. And he gets it back. Deep two from Hill. And that one's good. His second basket of four, shooting 50%. Hill taking no time to get that shot off. Once it hit his hands, it was off. Livingston with it. Moore's there. Here's Gobert. And the bucket counts. Three-point chance here. Yeah, terrific play right there. Great strength to finish through the contact. Brent, when you played, you were able to score in a variety of ways. Which do you think you were better, shooting off the catch or off the dribble? There's no doubt that shooting off the catch, Kevin, was much easier for me. I love the fact that I could get my feet set, start to anticipate when the ball was coming, who the ball was coming from, and then establish my own rhythm for each of those opportunities to cast away at the rim. I would think, though, you get rhythm by working off the dribble, too. Yeah, sometimes you have to be able to do that, but I oftentimes use that dribble to maybe create another opportunity for a teammate. And then the other idea, Kevin, is if you're a great catch and shoot player, the pump fake and one dribble in, that's something you have to perfect to keep the defense honest in terms of their closeout. And a first time out of the game called for Utah. Greg, when you watch DeMarcus Cousins play, you can see the beating he takes in the post, can't you? Yeah, and that's just how it goes with star centers with the size and activity of Cousins. Just like Shaq in the sense, big bruising centers are hard to officiate. Other players can lay into them and not even make a dent, but anyone else, it would be a foul. Neto can't get it to go. 
Pelicans trail by eight. Jackson down low. Misses the layup. He had him with that bump thing. Jefferson passing to Livingston. Over Moore. Another miss by Utah. That's a wide, wide open shot. Sadly, he came up short. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. And the Utah Jazz back in 2014, the worst defensive team in the league by points per possession. Greg, it's been a dramatic turnaround. Uh, one of the premier defensive teams now in our league in terms of their imposing paint presence. Not a team that gambles for steals or deflections. They keep you in front and force you to play over the top. The Pelicans making a switch here. McAdoo's checked in. Uh, Moore as an efficient scorer out here plays well within himself on the offensive end. Gobert with a screen on Jackson. Neto kicks to Livingston. And a miss there on the triple. Well, it's like the defense has a bunch of matchbooks in their hands right now, playing with fire. They were fortunate that somehow he misfired on that one. It's Pialica. Another shot. He takes it up and lays it in. Pialica's got his third bucket of the night. And, and Kevin, they started the game shooting it so well. I I'm surprised they haven't continued. They've got to get back to their strength. Here's Howard. And it's sent back by McAdoo. And he gets it back. Howard, good. And maybe a little disengaged in the first quarter. Ball didn't come his way. He's really provided some scoring in the second quarter of action. And it's Moore penetrating off the pick. And he hits the jump shot. Well, Moore, it can be fast. That time, a blur taking it to the rack. Gobert, the screen. Neto, the pass to Gobert. Got a piece of it. And he recovers it. Back to Neto. Three-pointer. Connects from three-point range. Neto's got himself going with the triple, his first basket of the game. And so it's Utah holding on to an eight-point lead, heading into the break. They're feeling very confident shooting the basket. Now here's more. Well, we've got a moment. Let's set the floor. Brought to you by Gatorade All Field Up for the second half. Setting the floor now for the Pelicans. The bigs inside, Davis and Cousins. On the perimeter, Moore and Hill. And it's Holiday in at the one spot. Jackson kicks to O'Quinn. Back to Jackson. No good from outside. Pelicans trail by eight. And they double up Cousins. Outside Holiday. Loads it up for Davis. And it goes out of bounds. That one's off Holiday. While we have a break, we can see which teams have made the most of their second chance opportunities over the last 10 games. The Pelicans fourth. I mean, you love their aggressiveness, not settling for one shot offensively, but really running down those loose boards and, and converting for extra points. Here's Mack, and it's sent back by Hill. And a fast break now for the Pelicans. And with that, the Utah lead is cut down now to just six in the basket from Drew Holiday. Excellent display from Drew Holiday, running the fast break well and finding a way to nail that shot. Gobert, the screen. Jackson dishes to Mack. Another miss by Utah. They look frustrated, 0 for 3. Not how you want to start the third quarter. Cousins, the pass to Holiday. Here's Davis. Utah with the rebound. They've led by as much as 10. Yeah, they got to hope to turn it on soon. One of four so far, and they know they got to be better. Here's Livingston. Up again. It's good on the putback. And the Jazz lead by eight. There you go. Finally getting one to drop. They have to be a little better now, starting one for five in this half. Guys are looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively. For sure. Holiday gets the bucket. Really like the form from Drew Holiday there. He always looks to take those if the D is going to back up off him. Livingston gets to Mack. Over Hill. Mack, good. Excellent job of simply taking what the defense offered up. Holiday dishes to Hill. 
down low and finished off by Davis. Enjoyed that unselfish play from Holiday for that swing pass to the open teammate. On left of the wing. And Gobert kicks to Livingston. A three-pointer off the mark. Yeah, another missed opportunity. And, and you can just see the frustration. Yeah, when your shot's in the fridge like this, it's easy to lose your confidence. And that's why some of the most prolific scorers, they have short-term memories. Kept alive. Here's Davis. That one is good again. He's six three from the floor with the basket. No amount of D right there is going to stop AD when he's that close to the 10. Nick by O'Quinn. Jackson drives in. And the dunk by Jackson. And what a beautiful way to polish off that sequence. Just strong at attacking the rim. That just puts a little more momentum on their side, don't you think? Absolutely. And that's where the defense failed. You can't let him throw that down. You've got to get over and foul him. Send him to the free throw line. And Drew Holiday is 6 -4. Maybe Brent closer to 6'5 in shoes. Huge for the point guard position. That size helps him out a lot defensively, especially when he uses his hands as well as he does. But most of the point guards in the league, Kevin, are good defensively at tipping passes and predicting plays. Drew Holiday has all of the physical sets to be a more dominant defender at that position. Another miss by Holiday. And you know what? He's just not on his game, no doubt about it. Their deficit isn't totally on him, but he has not been an asset for his team. Here's O'Quinn, and Davis sends it back. Phenomenal defense by Anthony Davis to spike that shot back. Make a heck of a volleyball player. Another miss by Holiday. That's just poor shooting right now from him, and I'm, I'm not sure why he's even attempting those kind of shots. Moore with the steal. The dish to Davis. Over Quinn. That misses off the backboard. Jazz leading by seven. Ring shot on the way. Rebounded by Moore. Right now he's just out of sync. A lot of shots rimming out. And he's got to try to find something different. And Holiday has it in the corner. And the Pelicans miss again. Talk about hurting your team. I mean, he just can't get anything to go out there. Here's Mack, an easy layup after time coming out, off the pit. max has got four points now in the quarter. If you're going in amongst the trees, you have got to be aggressive. Well, he's also crafty with how he approaches it. Right there, he uses just the right move to lay it in. So both teams changing it up here. Here's Wright. He's averaging a bit over five points a game. He feeds it to Jackson. Shoots. And it's O'Quinn with the rebound. O'Quinn's got rebound number five here tonight. Mitchell. Basket is good, and he'll get a chance for one more at the free throw line. Every time they get scored on during this run, it's come from inside the paint. And this is his first trip to the line tonight. And they have really leaned on his free throw shooting at times this season. He's been there for them, too, with 88% from the line. They set the pick. And Wright kicks to Bialica. Lock at six. To halt the run. No good on that one. And it's Utah the other way. Howard drives in. And it's Dwight Howard with the finish. You cannot give Howard a clear lane to the rim. He's terrific at throwing it down there, especially off the quick first step. And out of bounds as Utah gains possession. Jazz ball. And a look here at the shot chart for New Orleans. And the three-point game stands out as a major sore spot. It just has not been falling for him. I think at this point, you start to get away from that shot, try to engage in other parts of the offense. You don't want to hurt your team if that long ball isn't there. Drew Holiday has checked in for New Orleans. Rubio the pass to Howard. And two free throws coming up. Unable to get that one to go with all the content. Brent, you were known for your leaping ability. You won a dunk contest. We all remember it very vividly during the pre-draft process. 
did they measure your max vertical? They did, Kevin, at the Chicago pre-draft camp. You run through a series of tests there. Your conditioning, uh, how your CO2 gets kicked out. They put this mask on you and check your stamina. There's a bunch of doctors in there poking and prodding. I won't go into detail about that. Thank you. But they did measure the max vertical uh, during that Chicago pre-draft, and it was about a 39 inch vertical leap, so not too bad. Not too bad at all. Timeout called here. The Pelicans decide to talk it over. And I like this timeout. You, you're getting terrible rim protection right now. Well, you got to ask your team to give you a little bit more effort because there's just not a lot of fire on the defensive end. Pelicans trail by 16. They set the pick. And Holiday kicks to Diallo. And stolen by Howard. Here's Crowder. The Jazz again can't hit it. And listen, you can't design a play any better to get a look that good. Just couldn't knock it down. Uh, the best players know that is going to happen, and you just can't let it get into your head. It's a shot that you want to take. Here's Mitchell, and that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle, and two shots coming up. That's two shots, foul, two. Utah shooting their sixth and seventh free throws in the game. At the line for two. And the first one drops. And Mitchell drops them both. 136 left in the third quarter. Outside Holiday. Pass to Bialitz. Off the left rim and out. Yeah, it just seems whatever they do, nothing's working right now to stop the bleeding. I still think there's a chance you string a couple of big plays together and the tide can turn very quickly. So good at picking his spots. He always knows exactly what the team needs from him offensively. That's why they hold the lead. Hits the three-point five. Violets has got 10. Jazz leading by 17. Rubio outside. Rubio, Rubio, Rubio. Crowder goes in, and he gets it to go. And defensively, guys, they've been unable to shut down the middle. For Utah, they have made the most out of their opportunities at the line. They have yet to miss in seven attempts. And, and how about as a group, 80% on the season, one of their best attributes. Your Rebco's checked in for Utah. And Ricky Rubio, you know, known mostly for his ability to pass it and create opportunities for teammates. But, you know, I think he's an underrated defender at that point guard spot. And maybe he doesn't get the credit he deserves defensively. Yeah, that one definitely set up by the screen. Holiday got a nice, clean look at the rim. Rubio left side. Here's Howard. Doesn't get it to drop for him. And New Orleans will come the other way. Two seconds separating the shot clock and game clock. And Bialitz kicks to Holiday. Back to Belyitsa. The three-pointer no good. Here's your repco. He dishes it to Howard. Over McAdoo. That's good from Howard on the assist by your repco. He's got 18. And the D may be a little bit shaken right now. Howard is lighting them up and doing it in a variety of ways. And at the end of the third quarter, a huge lead in this one may already have been decided about what's led up to this point. Alvin Gentry trying to refocus his players' efforts. Yeah, I mean, dwelling on the point differential at this point isn't going to fix anything. But, but all five guys giving maximum effort, that might be a cure-all for a whole lot. And thanks again for joining us. Let's see what happens here in the fourth. And Utah looking at who they've got to start the fourth quarter. They've got Howard. Jay Crowder out there with Yurebko. Then it's Ricky Rubio. And it's Mitchell in at the two. Dishes it to Holiday. Hill has the open look. They get the rebound. Controls the rebound and puts it back up and in. Oh, what terrific hustle. He's got a nose for the rebound. Craig, he's ferocious when the ball goes up. Crowder kicks to Howard. And it's sent back by McAdoo. Crowder against Hill. Feeds it to right. Outside Holiday. 
Rebound, Utah. I think the D is just fine with those kind of shot attempts coming from him there because he's not hitting anything right now. And there's the foul on Jay Crowder. That's his first foul. Morris checked in for Drew Holiday. Checking in. Pelicans trail by 20. And Moore kicks to Diallo. Shot from free throw range. The shot will not fall. And Utah the other way now. Here's Mitchell. Rebounded by McAdoo. McAdoo's got four rebounds now tonight. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. NBA official, NBA referee, Brent Ashby, one of the toughest jobs in the world. There's been a lot of talk about adding an official to the court. Would that make a difference? You know, I'm thinking, Kevin, that's like asking four of my buddies to add a fifth guy to go out and they're all single. That means there's another guy I got to compete with. So maybe we don't have another set of eyes on the NBA game. Lots of physicality, lots of pushing and shoving. You may see more foul calling, which will slow down the tempo and the rhythm of the game. I'm not sure that's the best idea for the league. So then adding the Secaucus and the extra eyes in New York to look at calls, I, I think that might time take out, the place out. of adding the official. I, I think the league has done a great job, Kevin, Sorry. having Secaucus now have the ability to make some of those calls to help speed up what we do with regards to the replay. And Utah making a change here. Go Bears check in. Pelicans trail by 20. Davis sets a screen. The three from Hill gets it to go from beyond the arc. And really, as the three-pointers keep dropping, you get the sense that the frustration is mounting for the defense. Mitchell dishes to Howard. No good. He's made 9 of 15, shooting an even 60%. Davis, the pass to right, outside for Davis. No good on the three. Well, the D looks like they're laying off just a little bit. He made one three in the first half, but they're still daring him to shoot, and he can't make them pay for it. Yeah, outstanding job there of taking the harm and still able to finish. With the premium players and outside shooting Brent, plus defensive rules that lessen the need to defend in isolation, will we see guys playing for more years than ever before? Less wear and tear because there's less of it inside in games. You no, know, it's a great point, Kevin. I, I think that you're right about that. I also think that whatever we're doing off the court in terms of the players with nutrition and training regimen, that that's going to be another reason why we'll see players be very effective well into their late 30s and sometimes into their early 40s, which is about my limit, Kev. I'm still effective at 45. You are very effective at 45. <laughs> Here's Cousins, and then Cousins with the dunk. It takes a lot more than that to stop DeMarcus Cousins. He is a huge presence down there, and he answers every defensive challenge they pose. Gobert, the screen. Here's Mitchell, and there's the big-time jam as he slams it right over Davis. And how about the execution on that play? The screen was set up in exactly the right spot. And the finish wasn't too bad either. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how you see so many picks, but this one sets up the defense well. No one rotates over. Bang! We've played just over three and a half minutes now in the fourth quarter. Screen by Cousins. And Moore kicks to right. Just five to shoot. Ball's not loose. And it's stolen by Ricky Rubio. Here's Gobert. And plenty of contact on the shot. So two free throws coming up. And there's the foul against New Orleans. Rudy Gobert. Two shots. A free throw drops for Gobert. And they're drawing more whistles and working their way to the line here in the second half. Kyle O'Quinn is checked in for Utah. So he makes one of two as the second one misses. Pelicans trail by 19. Right with it. Guarded now by Rubio. Outside, Davis. Hands it from downtown. 
Look, I checked the numbers, guys. We know he is great from out there. He made one in the first half. Now he has one so far in this half. Look out. And New Orleans pushing it up now. Moore with the bucket. Moore's got four points this quarter. There's your run out. Great individual play. Yeah, beats the transition defense up the floor, and then the easy finish. Boy, those feel good. Here's Mitchell. Another miss by Utah. The Pelicans have gotten into a pretty good groove going 6 of 10 here in the final quarter. And yes, it's good. Uh, how about Cousins out in transition? The big guy running the lane and showing the little guys how it can be done. Rubio outside. Moore with the steal. And pushing it up is New Orleans. The Pelicans again in transition. And another three for New Orleans. Yeah, again, just a lackluster transition defense. The drive by Rubio. And the rejection by Cousins. Stolen by Mitchell. And here we go. Rubio heading to the hoop. Here's Gobert. And the bucket counts. Three-point chance here. And that's what you want in transition. A high percentage opportunity. Uh, the story is true, and here the defense does a very poor job of matching up. Drew Holiday has checked in for the Pelicans. And we're seeing more athletes use cross-training to improve their strength and conditioning. Back in the day, did you play any sports outside of basketball to improve your results? Kevin, if I asked you if surfing helped my basketball, would you say yes? <laughs> Well, in your regard, I would say yes. It did help balance, right? Yes. What about that? Hey, I should have surfed a lot more than Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now a chance to check out some of the tremendous play tonight from our Jordan player of the game. And it's been a terrific night for him in terms of the scoreboard. They've run a bunch of sets for him, and he's continued to come through. Scoring as well as he has, it's taken a lot of pressure off the rest of his teammates. And we've got an update here, so let's catch up with David Aldridge. Well, I was able to listen in on what Alvin Gentry said to his team. He is not happy with the turnovers. He said, we have got to get some shots. It's as simple as that, guys. Play smart and value the basketball. We'll see if the message sunk in, Kevin. Thank you, David. Moore with the bucket. And you can see the play calling this half. Another one from distance. No question, it looks like they've rented out room along the perimeter in this ball game, and they're likely to keep doing this until the defense makes an adjustment. Mitchell's shot is good. And boy, did he ever sell the pump fake. Worked to absolute perfection. And Holiday kicks to Davis. Moore outside. Here's Cousins, and it's New Orleans scoring again. Look how Cousins gets that shot off there right before the defense is about to converge on him and give him no angle. The player. The drive by Rubio. Mitchell kicks to Gobert. Holiday against Rubio. And then Mitchell with the dunk. No, oh, big finish. Emphatic. He hangs on the rim just for good measure. Wow. Outside, Davis. There's the pick. Moore dishes to Cousins. Gobert with the block. 115 left to play in the final quarter. O'Quinn and Davis sends it back. Good for his eighth field goal. He's attempted a dozen shots. And Davis is getting every shot he wants out there. Could be a very, very special night for him at this rate. Crowder from outside. That's good. It's Rubio with the assist. And the Jazz lead by 12. And clearly, we will not be witnessing a spirited comeback tonight, albeit as exciting as that would be. This was an excellent all-around performance for the Jazz. In the end, they had a better shooting percentage, and that's what made the difference. Sometimes, you know, things go your way. The other team wasn't catching many lucky breaks themselves. Yeah, and, and Kevin, not all about luck. I thought their overall shot selection was better. And this will be a big win for them. Lucky win number 13 now in the bag. And they're able to even the score 
of this series at a game apiece. Still, two more to go in the season series. Catching up on the changes for New Orleans. McAdoo is checked in for Cousins. Bialica comes in for Solomon Hill, and it's Jackson in for more. Nice shot by McAdoo. Ooh, tough layup with the guy right on him. He can be a hard player to handle at times. Rubio, the pass to Crowder. Takes a three, and Rubio gets it to go on the assist from Crowder. Running up the score, showing no mercy. Well, you want to close the door on any type of comeback effort. This has been a vault. ka -ching. <laughs> You're right. Here's Holiday. And so it's Utah easily grabbing the win. A resounding victory for them. And Greg in enemy territory, no less. That's exactly right. But with the way they controlled the game,